among the summits of the Austrian Alps. This could be midsummer or deepest winter. This white wilderness, way above all green, seems uninhabitable. Yet even here, there's life battling against the elements. The few inhabitants of these high mountains are perfectly adapted to the tough conditions, but it's still a struggle to survive up here especially in winter. This chamois buck is strong and healthy, yet he may not live to see the spring. Or even the next day. The golden eagle soars high as though oblivious to the life below. But its existence depends entirely upon those struggling on the mountain face. For hunter and prey alike, it is the Arctic altitude of these high peaks that spells the terms of life and sometimes of sudden death. The forces of nature displayed in these majestic mountains are daunting, and life amongst these peaks is tough. The heartland of the Austrian Alps is the Hohe Tauern range, dominated by the country's highest peak, the Grossglockner. From its peak, one overlooks the largest nature reserve of the Alps, the Hohe Tauern National Park, which is a wildlife refuge for countless national treasures. Avalanches are devastating to the chamois, but in the bitter months of winter, they are a blessing for the eagle. This golden eagle's last meal may have been weeks ago. His favorite prey are marmots, but they spend the winter in their burrows deep under the snow. Bad weather can keep an eagle grounded for days. And even when the sky is clear, potential meals are scarce in the winter mountains.
If there are traces of potential prey in these vast and solitary heights, whoever left them has been careful not to come out in bright daylight. This mountain hare has spent a long winter night feeding high above the timberline. Now, as the morning sun bursts above the horizon, it's time to withdraw into the shade and the shrubs along the fringes of the mountain forest. Camouflaged by their winter fur, mountain hares are nearly invisible in the snow, except to an eagle's eye which can spot even the slightest movement in an open snowfield. The mountain hare is the most secretive animal in the Alps. Hiding and running are his only defenses. A freshly dug hollow in the snow serves as a hiding place from the daytime enemy up in the sky. At this bright morning hour, he does not worry about his nighttime threat of the fox. After hunting all night, the fox should be looking for a resting place too, though he still seems hungry and excited by something. To the fox, with his acute sense of smell, the ground and the air are full of messages. An adult chamois need fear from neither the fox nor the eagle. Its enemies are snow and hunger, and there is little threat from either at the moment. The ptarmigans, though, are at risk when a fox is near. They feel safest among small boulders, where they find cover and can keep an eye on the surrounding snow fields while feeding. When an enemy approaches, ptarmigans can always rely on their wings, but the threat of a surprise attack keeps them on constant guard. For all their tranquility and beauty, these mountains are a cold, harsh wilderness. The Hohe Town range is the highest and wildest region of the Eastern Alps with ice-capped peaks and valleys carved out by glaciers. Beyond the grim north faces and barren crags, there are also sunny southern slopes and lush green valleys that offer a haven for an astonishing diversity of plant and animal life. Nighttime is not necessarily dark time. The full moon is almost like a midnight sun. On such a white night, it's as well to keep your running gear in shape. The 
the wind is in the hunter's favor. To make a kill, the fox must come very close before attacking. If the mountain hare breaks into a run, there's little point in the fox even getting under starter's orders. Such a waste of effort in these conditions could end the hunter's life. The hare knows she need not really exert herself. All it takes is a small reminder about who has the snowshoes and who hasn't. Another wind, another message, and this time it's good news. Very good news indeed. A lucky find like this is rare. After weeks of patrolling the mountains, night in, night out, he has some sustenance at last. Each winter, thousands of avalanches wipe out many animals. Most carcasses are trapped beneath snow and ice until the summer thaw. This is one in a thousand which remained unburied. The fox's energy levels can be restored at last. Even so, it's not an ideal meal to sink one's teeth into. Frozen food is not necessarily fast food. With every day of early spring, the sun gets stronger, reaching ever deeper into the valleys. South-facing quarries catch the sun like giant reflectors. But there are certain secret places where even the sun's rays can't penetrate. After six months in perfect darkness, it's not the sun, but an inner hormone clock that brings this marmot into the dazzling light. To get here, marmots often have to dig upwards through meters of wet and heavy snow. As its fur soaks up the sun's warmth, all winter stiffness will gradually melt away. The first sound that meets a marmot ear in spring is the excited mating call of a neighbor, a male ptarmigan. The ptarmigan shows off, marking his territory with vigorous bursts of flight. His is a double message, females are welcome, males keep out.
marmots had the right idea for the harsh winter, the whole family cuddled together in their underground burrow. A typical family consists of an established couple and their litters from previous years. As with everything which is small and furry around these parts, marmots are on predators' menus. They try to stay close to their bolt hole burrows, but the smell of something tender and green after a six-month fast is too alluring. Since they went underground last autumn, they have burned off most of their body fat, about one-third of their total weight. A busy spring and short summer lie ahead. There's not much time to mate, raise a family, dig new tunnels, regain weight, all before winter comes back. Another ptarmigan has arrived, but it isn't a longed-for female. A male intruder. Maybe he's made a mistake and has only overlooked the occupant of this territory. But this looks more like a challenge and may require assertive action. The established tenant's angry and shows that he'll stand no nonsense. His flight demonstrates exactly where he draws the line. The days grow warmer and the ibex lose their shaggy winter wool. It's not the mating season, so these powerful mature males form a separate herd from the females and kids. were once hunted to the brink of extinction. Strict protection laws in all the Alpine countries have brought them back. 400 of these champion climbers now live in the Hoi Town National Park. talent for climbing comes into its own when these male adolescents play fight. Such practice will come in useful in later life when they have serious rival fights to challenge the authority of high-ranking males. Eight months worth of snow is locked up on the peaks, but not for much longer now that spring is here. Masses of snow and glacial ice are waiting to be released. The big thaw has begun. Day and night, thousands of streams and waterfalls now fill the Hoi Town valleys with their music.
there's no stopping the urgency of the sprouting and blossoming. Not a single hour of sunshine must be missed. As the sun heats up these enormous cliff faces, the thermal winds of spring carry up a flock of alpine chuffs into dizzying heights. These are partners. No other bird can ride the rough and ever-changing winds that sweep along the crags as elegantly as the chuff. These are the master gliders of the Alps. Safely tucked away in crevices are hungry chicks. It may be a desirable and a safe place to be reared, but it's a lot of daily commuting for the chuff parents. Every morsel of food, be it insects, small mammals, bits of carcass, must be flown in from way below. In this vertical landscape, up to 50 round trips a day is a taxing feat few birds could achieve. Flying conditions are not always so ideal. Rainstorms and fog can cut off outside supplies in a flash, and then chicks have to stay hungry and try to conserve energy by sleeping. Back down to earth, another new parent. This mother mountain hare is on patrol. Her one-week-old leveret is left alone all day, but the mother stays nearby. Only at night does she come to feed and groom. Usually, there are two to four siblings nearby. Each one is kept alone in its own hiding place. After only three weeks of suckling, the young hares are self-sufficient and go their own, not very social ways. All that suckling means the mother needs a protein boost. The soldanellas are the very first fresh green of the season. In a few weeks, her coat will be as uniformly brown as that of her young. By then, she will be ready to mate again and have the second litter of this year. Like everyone else, she has a lot to pack in while the weather's fair. In the Alps, mountain hares are extremely secretive and solitary. They are rarely seen and they rarely see each other. Late June, and the ptarmigan hen's plumage has long changed, announcing that summer has arrived. Her partner continues his vigilant guarding of their exclusive territory. In a perfectly camouflaged nest somewhere on the ground, the hen has laid six to nine eggs.
Marmots must be the most social of all animals on the mountain. These fights between clan members may establish rank and position, but just as often, it is mere play and social interaction. And fighting skills are sometimes needed to defend the clan's territory against other Marmot clans. In July, when the days are warm and long, and the grass is thick and green, this spring's litter makes its debut. When the youngsters first leave the family burrow, they are 40 days old and already half grown. These are careless days, but young marmots may get carried away, which makes them vulnerable to predators. Growing and feeding is packed into each sunny day. In three months, they will have to be fat enough for their first six months of hibernation. Even outside their burrow, where they sleep together, marmots maintain close relationships by frequent physical contact. A fundamental lesson for young marmots, always stay close to your nearest tunnel and to your clan. They should do so with good reason. The neighborhood watch has spotted an unwelcome visitor. Alarm. Within seconds, the clan melts away. The fox approaches the burrow in a roundabout and tactical way, but the entrances are too narrow. Even for smaller predators, entering would not be a good idea. Marmots can be ferocious if confronted in their home. While an enemy is near, they will wait patiently underground. This was by no means the fox's first visit, and it won't be her last. The Marmot clan has learned to live with this almost daily intrusion. After all, the fox lives just around the corner, in, of all things, an abandoned marmot burrow. Here too is a growing and hungry family. The young foxes are about the same age as the young marmots. Fresh young marmots in the locality is as strong a selling point as any when choosing a home. Even so, the den's very high up. It's possibly the highest in all of the Alps. Unlike the marmots, the vixen has to traipse through the neighborhood, scouring the land for mice and marmots, and scavenging mountain farms for food for her young. Life is tough for her, whatever the season. For thousands of summers, 
the wildlife of the Alps has shared this habitat with man's domestic animals. In an almost nomadic tradition, cattle, sheep and goats are brought to the high pastures above the timber line for three months a year. In places, grazing has changed this habitat and pushed down the timber line. Centuries ago, some of today's pasture land was alpine forest. The ancient forests in the National Park, though, are still pristine. A black woodpecker, the largest of its kind in Europe, its life would be very deprived without dead timber and old trees. Dead wood is rich in grubs. Old trees make splendid homes, once chiseled out. Young trees just won't do. These three-week-old chicks are big enough to climb up inside the tree to meet their parents. Another week and they will fly the nest. As with all wild animals at this time of the year, the parents commit themselves to finding food for their young. There are bumper crops of ant and beetle larvae in the old trees. Raising a family is a risky business. At the moment, life is blooming, but their fortunes would crash if the weather were to change. The woodpecker industriously pokes a hole into the rotting wood with its razor-sharp beak. A long and sticky tongue is ideal for extracting delicious forest larvae. Cultivated woodland, with little or no dead wood, would be a very undesirable residence for insect larvae. Woodpeckers depend completely on these old forests. Black woodpeckers build generous nesting caves, spacious enough for the odd squatter. The rare Tegmalm's owl, for instance, would be hard pressed to find suitable family quarters without the woodpecker's help. By late June, the owl's four chicks are well developed, but still depend completely on their parents, who are just as busy finding food as are the woodpeckers. Winter is never far in the Alps, but at such a sensitive time, at the height of the breeding season, it spells disaster. Within a single hour, it's as though summer were never here. Temperatures fall below freezing. Weather like this will sort out the weak from the strong.
adult ptarmigans are unfazed. Under the snow, the hen sits tight on her nest. But for how much longer? Alpine plants are able to cope with the cold, but they too are losing precious time while they are in bloom. Everything goes on hold for two weeks. Soon the freezing interlude takes its toll. Out of four young owls, just one has survived on the bodies of its siblings. Griffin vultures. Such behavior suggests there must be other victims. In such untimely winter conditions, the cattle brought up here for summer grazing suffer most. Every year, animals are lost. But then, nothing is ever really lost where nature has its way. Like the cattle, these vultures are only summer guests. Most of their year is spent on the Croatian coast. Food is sparse there in the summer, so in years when they don't breed, they come up here. And banquets like this are a good reason why. Brightening horizon heralds a change. This time, it's for the better. The weaker siblings' remains are a pungent reminder of nature's harshness. But the one survivor has emerged from the experience stronger than before. As an only chick, he thrives on his parents' devoted attention. Even during the crisis, he has grown and is now big enough to swallow whole mice. High up among the boulders, there is another survivor. It's a bad year for the ptarmigans, but at least they have one hatchling out of their six to nine eggs. The chick pecks up small seeds and insects from the very first day of its life. The mother hen guides and protects it.
the youngster was lucky. If the snowfall of three weeks ago came now, it would not survive. The mother and her offspring have a territory all to themselves, including the luxury of an all-day security guard father. Time is running out. Autumn isn't far away. Soon the male will leave the territory and form a flock with other males. In late autumn, the male flock will be joined by the mothers and their grown chicks. Summer hasn't been the kindest. Subtle signs of autumn lurk around for weeks. Color hues merge from green to yellow and brown, and there's a sharp nip in the morning air. In spite of the signs, autumn is always a surprise when it arrives, and it's always too early. A sudden night frost turns the larch into a fiery yellow. The few daytime hours of sun are precious. The chuffs descend into the mountain's lee, but even down here, snow may come any day. In the treetops of the stone pine forest, nutcrackers are finishing their harvest of pine nuts. This isn't the feeding frenzy, it seems. They're preparing for winter by stocking a larder with pine nuts. Nutcrackers can carry up to 70 pine nuts in their crop. In an autumn season, one bird will store 100,000 seeds. Many of these will never be recovered from their hiding place between the rocks and will germinate. In fact, the spreading of stone pine forests depends on these birds. Early September. Already the smell of snow is in the wind. Yet the sun squeezes out a few more rays upon these dwarf willow seeds. The early snow on the peaks and ridges is there to stay. The sluggish young marmots are fattened and furry, ready for their first hibernation. Their burrow is cleaned and extended in preparation. The final touches are added to make it all the more cozy. Fat marmots make tempting prey. But next to their bolt hole, nothing can worry them. 
What made the mountain hare come out of hiding? She should not be out here in the open, in daylight. Once more, nature adjusts her balance sheets. A life is lost, a life is nourished. For every animal, life is tough in these mountains. And yet, life will go on. Having survived a truly Arctic childhood, the Tang Maung's owl will cope with its first mountain winter. And having learned its lessons in the wild, this youngster looks life calmly in the eye. The Hoi Town Range is wilderness, a place where nature still has its way. <laughs> 